In this short video, we'll see where earthquake forces are generated in structures and how those forces are resisted by the structure and eventually by the foundation. We call this the lateral load path or the flow of forces. So what we're showing here is two diaphragms and these diaphragms have been separated from the main lateral frame of the building. There should also be another frame on the other side, but I'm not showing that for clarity. So the two elements here are the diaphragms. These would be the floors of the building, but when we're talking about the resistance to lateral earthquake forces, we refer to them as diaphragms. The other element is the seismic force resisting system, or SFRS. In this case, I've shown it to be a moment resisting frame, but this could be anything. It could be a shear wall system, it could be a braced frame system. What we're talking about here is applicable to any type of seismic force resisting system. Let's go through the various stages and how the forces are generated and how they travel through the building to the foundation. Step one, inertial forces act on the diaphragm. The base of the building moves laterally. This causes the building to move laterally. That lateral motion is resisted by the inertia in the diaphragm. This force is shown distributed because the mass is distributed. Once we've generated this force, the diaphragm itself needs to develop a reaction wherever it's connected to a seismic force resisting system. In this simple example, that's at either end of the diaphragm. So what we're showing here in single thicker arrows is the force that's generated at the edge of the diaphragm to resist the inertial forces in the diaphragm. On the right hand side, we're also showing the equal and opposite reaction that the diaphragm causes on the seismic force resisting system. This location where the force is generated is a highly loaded region of the building. We usually need to reinforce it with special details. This specially detailed region is called the collector because it collects all the forces generated in the diaphragm at one specific location. All of the diaphragms generate forces and all of the diaphragms deliver them to the seismic force resisting system. In this case, one at each of the two stories. Now we have a laterally loaded frame and we need to see what reactions are developed at the base. One is the shear force. We often talk about base shear. And the other is the overturning moment. The shear force is represented by the two horizontal arrows at the base of the frame. The overturning moment is resisted by tension on one side, compression on the other. This isn't a complicated idea. It doesn't need a long video. But keeping this topic in mind, as we get into more complicated aspects of the seismic behavior of buildings, will help avoid confusion. 